Okay. Nick Booker a solid uh, B plus, I think. All right, hey, Nick is he is solid in his explanation. Now the the only thing that that bumps you up a notch is you got to have a little flair with it. That's what makes Bill Kennedy where he is the flair that goes along with the explanation. Spillers down here on the other end of the okay. floor. They want to make sure yeah. that that entire corner area is, is dry. Okay, Andy Nagy checks it out, says we're good. All right, 2.6 on the shot clock for the Grizzlies coming back in. In a 112-112 game. Knocked away by Indiana. 2.1 on the shot clock. Rick Carlisle arguing, but no. Normally a touch is three-tenths of a second. Gilliard, contested shot, shot clock violation. So Indiana now, a chance for the lead. Yeah, they game execution by, by guys that, like I said, the, the Grizzlies can have somewhat of an advantage. So they have at least three of their five guys on the floor played together a number of minutes with the G League. He's had the hot hand. Shepard got the step, and G.G. Jackson rejected it. Walker on the pickup. Gets the screen. Walker contested three. Rebound Harrison. But what a block by G.G. Jackson. It looked like Jaron Jackson Jr. coming over with that wingspan and block. The defensive firm of Jackson and Jackson. I think look at this. Oh, nice move. Harrison drives. Gigi for three. Rebound Shepard. Loose ball. Indiana has it. 38 seconds remaining in regulation. Grizzlies do not have a foul to give. Indiana does. And Harrison. And that'll be free throws for Shepard. Harrison going for the steal. Commits the foul. So Shepard to the free throw line. Both teams have been solid at the line tonight. Grizzlies 18 of 20, Indiana 18 of 21. And the Grizzlies, well, Taylor Jenkins was successful with his first challenge. He's going to go ahead and call a timeout here to challenge again. I asked him about this earlier uh, in training camp. He said, you know, I'll be more aggressive, and I'm going to try this out in the preseason. Memphis has taken a timeout to challenge uh, the ruling of the floor of the foul. I think we might have a 50% winning percentage this game. Could be 50-50. Could be Listen, the other thing, too, with the second challenge, you don't get your timeout back. Yeah, exactly. That's that's the other uh, even to that. Rule. Even if you get it, even, even if, if you get it correct, you don't get the correct. timeout back. This is this a, a, a shot in the dark? Why? Well, I mean, why not? Yeah, why not? I'm trying to tell you, if, if we're in the park, we're arguing all night. We arguing until the end of the time. Yeah. If yeah. We're in the park. Yeah. In the arena? <laughs> so now, the conversation. We're going to see what type of again, Christmas... Again, just for those of you who are not familiar, the replays are queued up by Secaucus. There is conversation with one of the staff officials, but eventually the decision is made by the crew on the floor. Here's the thing, partner. He gets all ball. He does it's, get all it's, ball. It's, it's, all ball. It's, it's how much contact are you going to allow after he hits the basket. Is it marginal or is it illegal contact? Exactly. That's what I said. In the park, I'm arguing. You try to call a foul on me, we we got to argue with this. Well, yeah, I mean, you grew up in the Jersey playgrounds. You guys argue about everything. Yeah, especially on game point. Is it, at this point, at, at, at game point. All right, Nick Booker. Going to give us the news here.
to review the challenge is successful. The ball is deflected around the same time as there is contact. Since the ball is loose at the time of the whistle, the ball will be put in play with a jump ball center circle between any two with 24 on the shot clock. Taylor, Taylor Jenkins, two for two. Two for two? Who say this much? You know what's encouraging about that call? Is maybe that they're, they're going to allow a little more physicality in the game as we move forward this season. Well, the way Nick Booker had explained it, contact with the ball and the body kind of at the same time, it wasn't like there was body contact in order to get to the ball. So Gigi Jackson will jump against Smith. And the Grizzlies win the challenge, win the jump. We have overtime. Overtime in preseason. Lofton going to go to the goal. No, rebound, Bacon! A bucket waiting to happen. Just let him get a fingertip on it. Grizzlies a two-point lead. Crowd chanting defense. Brown works to the baseline, pitches it out. Smith banks it in with 3.2, and the Grizzlies will take timeout. Could we have overtime? Yes, we, yes, 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 we could. For the first yes. preseason game yes, we could. of the season. Yes, we could. Yes, we could. Grizzlies are now out of timeouts, but Junior Lofton going strong to the goal and through all the... Listen, man, we had, for so many, for so long, they're going to continue to be the comparisons to Zach Randolph. And it's obvious. Is, and if that is not a Zach Randolph-esque play, see here, nice move by Smith to get to the basket. I don't know what it is. Off an offensive rebound with eight hands, Kenny Loft is still able to get his through to get the tip. And then big body control here by Smith to be able to drive and finish to force the top. Jalen Smith, originally drafted by the Phoenix Suns, tying the game at 114. I don't think anybody wants overtime, but I think the coaches have to be secretly delighted that now you have this teachable moment with 3.2. Game on the line. Let's see what we can do. Harrison, LaRavia, Lofton, Gigi Jackson. And Jacob Gilliard. And Jacob Gilliard telling everybody, we don't have any timeouts left. Yes. The biggest thing you, for Taylor Jenkins is you would like to get a look. Moravia will trigger. Smith guarding Lofton at the foul line. Got it to Harrison. Harrison drives for the win. No, and we're going to overtime. 